Hello, I'm Barbara Peters. Welcome to this episode of The Criminal Calendar. And I'm going to tell you from the outset that I'm going to feel like an idiot and I'm scared because our subject today is legendary television producer, scriptwriter, actor, and author Stephen J. Cannell. Barbara, and, and, uh, and axe murderer. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, and criminal mind. <laughs> <laughs> An all around really nice guy. You know, one of the things I think is so wonderful about you is that you could be the whole like paradigm of the obnoxious Hollywood success story, and you're one of the nicest men I've ever met. Oh, how sweet of you. Well, I'll tell you what. As you know, I have a learning difference. I, I have severe dyslexia. Right. And in my mind, I'm still that kid that flunked the first grade. I mean, you know, because all these, all of these things uh, impact heavily on you in your youth, and 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 they and they, they they inform who you are. And in the first grade, I flunked. I flunked in the fourth grade. I flunked in the tenth grade. I was put back with the younger kids, so it's kind of hard. In, 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 for that guy that's in the back of my head to be strutting around going, look at me, <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm still that kid that flunked the first grade. And I'm, I'm really glad I'm that kid that flunked the first grade in my head because it, it has made me humble in terms of the fact that I, I never thought, I, I've never thought it was a big deal. I've never thought I was the best writer I know. I can name writers. I used to, I, I would have writers that were working for me and I would be so jealous of their talent. And then instead of, of running them down behind their back so that you know I would I would actually go the other direction I would celebrate them and, and David Chase as an example you mm -hmm. know created the Sopranos was on, was worked on Rockford with me and I used I used to think God if I could just write as good as this guy you know and I'm always looking at other writers and 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 appreciating them for what they do and not thinking of myself as being the best writer I know as a matter of fact I always feel of, my, of myself that I'm a work in progress and if you think that way, A, it allows you to grow, it allows you to continue to get better, and B, what it allows you to do is to keep some sense of perspective because my success is all shared. I mean, the Rockford Files without Jim Garner, well, it would have been nothing, you know, and, and the same is true of a lot of these television shows, you know, I mean, the acting was, was, was equally as important as the writing and the conceptualizing of the series, and, and so I, I bear that in mind. Well. I do think that you're legendary, among other things, for how nice you are to work for. I can remember I went to Book Expo in Los Angeles. It must have been the end of the 1990s. And you started writing in 1995, right? Novels, yeah. Right, your novels. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't know you particularly as a as a writer. So I went to Book Expo, and there are lots of famous writers there, and they have you know lines of fans, eager booksellers dying to get signatures, and all the rest of it. And then there was this one line that started at one end of whatever the facility is and it wound all around the building and out the door and I'm going, wow, John Grisham or somebody is here. And I said, who's that? And they all said, Stephen J. Cannell. And I'm going, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Not being a television watcher or a great review because I was always a bookworm instead. And I thought, you know, there really must be something to this guy beyond books to have achieved this kind of tribute because it was a tribute if well, you think about it. It, it it's it, it's not it's certainly flattering i must tell you and you know if i took it seriously it it, it would it would uh it, it would bend me i think in some way so i don't take it seriously i i i believe that you know people we're so lucky when we're in a business where we where we are able to interact with the public and to share what we have with the public, and and when then they they come to you and they and they have such gratitude for your work for what you've done, which I would have been doing for nothing, you know, I would have been right. doing just because it's fun to do, you know, I, it always knocks me out. It always makes me feel like my gosh, you know. And when we're making it, we sort of don't think about the public. We don't think about the people who are consuming it all, you know. I mean, we th we we're basically thinking, God, how are we going to get this on the air by Friday? Sure. And and it's all this, this slide for life to get the final loops in and close the show up and get it dubbed and all of that. And, and then you realize that that all these people are growing up with this and and it's impacting the way they think and oh, it's just amazing. Do you think that growing up in Pasadena, I mean you were there sort of on the scene, also had some effect in, in making, keeping this in perspective? It's not like you showed up from Iowa, you know, and were discovered at the at the soda fountain or something. May I tell you where I think that, aside from my learning differences, which I, which I believe were really important in keeping me level because, uh, you know, it's hard for me to accept 
that I'm anything but that person inside my head that, well, I, that was I developed. Well, I want to talk to you about dyslexia later, but, but yeah. But then the other thing is my wife. You know, I started dating her in the eighth grade. And if I, if I were to start to walk around with helium head, you know, right. uh, she would slap me down so fast. <laughs> you know, so in, in my household, I'm just me, you know, and, and, and she knew me when I was flunking algebra. So uh, it's hard to have a big head at home. It's hard to have a big head at home, gotcha. you know. So she's like kept me very, it was funny because I, when I was at the studio and people were using the word genius and brilliant in the same sense with my name and I'd go home and I'd tell her, yeah, the people at the studio, you know, I think I might be brilliant. Well, she would say, you're not, you know, so just... Must be some other Stephen Jay <laughs> Cattle. No, just like, you got him fooled, guy, you know, I love and that's it. funny. Well, I went to your website, which I must say is excellent, and it's, it's cannel.com. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got some wonderful stuff there, which I really enjoyed watching. But I printed out your biography just so I wouldn't screw this up. Um, I know you're an Emmy Award winning writer and chairman of Ch Cannell Studios. Although I love your phone thing because when it comes up, it says something different like SJ, SJC Productions, I think yeah. is what I Well, I have a lot phone. of companies under, ah. under my umbrella company, the Cannell Studios. Okay. Anyway, uh, it says here, in your highly successful career spanning over three decades, you've created more than 40 shows, scripted more than 450 episodes, and produced or executive produced more than 1,500 episodes with a whole lot of hits. That is a huge body of work. Yeah, and, and, and you know, it, it, it is, but at the same time, it was a lot of fun. And uh, I write for five hours every day, Barbara. You know, I, re I still do with my novels, and, you know, I'm, I'm a writer at heart. I get up every morning at 3.30 in the morning, which people say, well, why do you get up so early? I get up so early because it's when I always have been getting up. Right. It's my writing time. I, my, the clock in my head goes off at 3. I wake up, I lift weights for an hour, and then I go to work. And I write for five hours. And, and it's the best five hours of my day. I have more fun doing that than anything else I do during the day. And, uh, you know, and if you do that for 40 some odd years, you're gonna turn out a lot of stuff. Well, absolutely. I hope I'm not making you feel like some kind of monument or something. These are the kinds of things you start saying to people getting lifetime achievement awards, you know, because you live to be however yeah. old we both are. But I guess one of my questions is, having had this terrific and impressive body of work, what brought you to write books, which is a different activity? Because you have so emphasized on your television site, and a little bit so far in our discussion, the cooperative nature, all the pieces that, that you have to pull together rooted in the script in order to do a film, whether it's television or the movie theater. But a book is really a solo act. Yeah, it is. And, and that's part of the fun of it, in a way. I'm, I'm somebody who never, um, never felt bad about sharing the credit and sharing the glory in a television show. I, I loved, I, I played football, was my, was my athletic mm -hmm. endeavor in high school. And, you know, and I loved the, the fact that there were 11 of us trying to move the ball up the field. And, 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 and there's a lot about that that's part of, of, of a television show, the sense of a bunch of people coming together to make something and to have it happen. And no, yeah, I, would, I was the quarterback because I, I created the show and I was in right. charge, but, but I had blocking backs and I had wide receivers and I had, I had you know, linemen that were holding out the other guys. And, and, and it wasn't by myself. If I'd been there alone, I'd have failed. And I always knew that, and and uh, and that was part of the fun of it, because I still run into actors that we did shows 20 years ago, and we're, it's like we're we were in the trenches together, and we're buddies, and it's like old football friends of mine, you know, where I, you know, we, it's the same feeling. Novel writing is very, is as you say, very solitary. It's very different, you know. You have to make that adjustment. One of the things that I think most distressed me when I started be, to write novels exclusively was not being on set, not getting the, the social interaction, because I'm a very social person. Obviously so. And I, would, I was a little lonely, not that, so, so what happened was my acting career kind of lit up, which, was, which, which I'd done acting during the years when I was producing television. But then, you know, after I got out, I had to be very careful, because if I took too much acting work, I, it would take me away from what I really was supposed to be doing. Mm 